All right, all right, all right. What's up, everyone? So I'm here today. It's 11.30 p.m. And um, to be honest, I walked in through the door. I was like, you know, you know, I came in from work and I'm like, you know, tomorrow's Valentine's Day. I've been wanting to do a video on this for a long time. Um, long time. Yeah, probably about a year now. Um, but, you know, all of these reservations that I had, like, ah, oh, you know, it's kind of racy and, you know, oh, what are the Christians going to think? And all these other things that, you know, I guess it's taken me a long time to just work through and break down the inhibitions. And now, like I said, as soon as I walked through the door, I was like, you know what? Tomorrow's Valentine's Day. Let's just go ahead and make this a Valentine's Day special. If people don't like it, they don't have to watch it. They don't have to listen. If they start watching, if they start listening to it, and they don't like it, it's not really their thing, they can continue to wait for the other stuff. But um, this might be very helpful for everybody else um, who is willing to listen because it was extremely helpful for me um, in several ways that we most likely are not going to get into um, in this video. Um, but... Uh, I wanted to just go ahead and introduce you guys to this thing that I actually came across um, and started really studying in depth, um, I think, I would say about a little bit over a year ago, um, called the Five Erotic Blueprints. Now this was in a way coined or discovered by a woman named Jaya, or Jaya, I believe it's Jaya, I don't know. But um, she is a sexologist um, and she has a website and everything that you guys can go and take the quiz on. And in fact, I actually recommend that if you are interested in this, that you go and take the quiz first. Um, because if you hear the um, definitions that I'm about to be going through in this video and everything, I believe that it might help you. But the way that we human beings are, um, which I've just found is that we love to identify ourselves with some of the most quote quote special things um, and especially when it comes to something uh, of the erotic nature sex and you know we want to kind of like boost ourselves up like the most that we can so we hear something we just identify with it um, and yeah I think just for the accuracy sake um, I would recommend going to take the test. This is not like the 16 personalities test where, you know, I would doubt your results. Um, I think that you can pretty much trust the test results on this site and it's going to give you a percentage at the end where you can screenshot it and then you'll be able to um, then start to learn about whatever type that you are. Um, it's going to show you like the percentage like in, in a row and everything um, and it's kind of like the cognitive functions where we have a little bit of everything um, but your top two um, I would say are the ones that you should focus on the most or um, are probably the most representative of who you are. So like I said this helped me out a lot and I just thought that you know Valentine's Day special or whatever it'll help you guys out a lot and even if it's not really Valentine's Day when you guys are watching this um, it'll still be pretty beneficial um, and it'll just be a great conversation starter for you know a lot of people that you know are comfortable to be able to discuss these things and so yeah without further ado let's get into these so the first erotic blueprint that we're gonna be talking about today is the sensual erotic blueprint. Now, some things that you should know about the sensual is that they appreciate aesthetics and everything involving the senses. Um, they can become creative, like very creative in the bedroom. And when I, what I mean by that is like, you know, they often like to involve, you know, the things like roses, you know, like they're, they're really romantic types. Like they're all about, again, like the aesthetics and everything. They like when the bed is like made, they like the candles, you know, um, being lit and everything. They like the music playing a lot of times also. Sometimes though, the music can be a distraction because they're so in tune with the senses. They like when the space is like really like tidy and all of that, everything just kind of like influences, you know, everything that has to do with the senses. They also enjoy things, you know, like maybe anything involving like, you know, whipped cream, you know, on the breasts or, you know, um, honey, you know, anything that's, you know, involving like, you know, with the taste, the, uh, the sight, the lingerie and all of that, you know, the smell, whatever it might be. All of these types have a dark side and that's what you should probably know. Um, they all have like a downfall to them or a weak 
uh, yeah, weak side to them. Um, and for the sensual, um, they can be very easily distracted by things and turned off. Um, they also have a tendency to overthink a lot of times. So they can get like, you know, really like stuck in their head um, and that keeps them from being present. So that's kind of like, you know, an interesting thing because, you know, as a sensual, a lot of times like that means that they're like really in tune with like what's going on and everything like that. But also a lot of times like because there might be a lot going on then they can get distracted, you know, like they're trying to like make love to you and then all of a sudden, you know, the song is like distracting or they see, you know, I don't know, a roach just crawl across the floor or your socks <laughs> laying on the floor or something like that, you know, that kind of thing can really turn them off. And so I would say that you should really be careful um, if you are with a sensual or if you are a sensual, you know, to try to like control your environment in this way so that you can keep yourself from falling victim to some of these things. Um, because sensuals really require the right environment in order to like have things like activated. Um, and they can, like I said, they can easily be turned off, like just like that, you know. So if you have like a mess going around, um, you know, if you didn't take a shower, maybe, you know, and certain like smells are floating around that are not good smells, you know. Um, if there's like even like things like maybe like fluids that, you know, just might turn them off, you know, at times and everything like that, you know, you, you got to be careful about stuff like that if you're messing with the sensual. Um, and this is good stuff to know, you know, whether if you're essential, if your partner's essential, because that can really answer a lot of questions as to why maybe your partner is not often as aroused. So the way that I see it is you have to create an environment so that when this person does actually start to get horny, you know, like it's not, it's kind of, I kind of see them as like a groundhog, you know, like they're like coming out and then they're like looking around and they're, it sucks, but it's almost like they're gonna find any excuse to go right back into their hole um and what you want to do is not necessarily force that groundhog out but what you want to do is you want to try to cultivate an environment to where when they do rear their head open and they take a scan of the room or whatever it might be they have no excuse to go back into their hole you know what i mean um and so that's the advice about the sensual and also a description on what the sensual blueprint is so the second one that we are going to be talking about today is the kinky type. Now the kinky is all about power play and novelty and what is known as taboo. Um, so there's actually two sides to the kinky erotic blueprint. Um, there is the psychological side, which is all about, you know, that mental power play thing, you know, so such as like slave games and again, like power dynamics, you know, like, ha ha ha, I am daddy now, you know, or I am the little, I am whatever it might be, like all of these like psychological games just to kind of like, you know, um, assert some sort of like dominance or be dominated in some way, shape or form. So that's the very like psychological aspect of the kinky. Um, but then there's also the second one, which is the impact um, aspect of the kinky. And this is what we're probably like most, you know, uh, aware of um, a lot of times when we hear about kinky. So, you know, you got the things like, you know, the spanking, the choking, the etc. You know, whatever you can think of um, having to do with like, you know, kinks and stuff like that. Like that is all incorporating with the kinky blueprint. Now, some things that, you know, are considered as the dark side for the kinky blueprint or the downfalls of the kinky blueprint is that they have shame a lot of times about their kinks. Um, and they feel a lot of um, shame a lot of times about their, ta like, you know, their taboo arousals, you know. Um, kinks, kinky blueprints um, often have a lot of like fetishes, for example, um, and they are aware that, you know, their fetishes can a lot of times be pretty strange or again, like taboo, novel. And if they can't find a partner, you know, who's able to have patience with them to be able to understand these fetishes and not make them feel weird about it or not make them feel like perverted or strange or whatever it might be, then um, if they can't find such a person to accept that, then they can have a really hard time um, in their sex life. And so, if you are with a kinky person or if you are a kinky person, and this is something that's very good to know because pretty much it's good to know like that you're normal um, and this is just kind of like how you are. This is just kind of how you're wired um, and try to help somebody else understand how you are if you are the kinky or if you are with a kinky, 
don't shame them, you know, for the types of things that they might be into. Maybe you're not into those things, um, and they you shouldn't be forced to be into those things either. But try to like converse, try to like have some type of like conversations about like a compromise of some sort. Another dark side of the kinky erotic type is also that they can tend to, in a way, get fixated a lot of times on these certain fetishes that they may have. And so Jaya, for example, gave the example, uh, Jaya, for the example, gave the example, wow. Jaya, for example, gave um, maybe like, okay, what if a kinky person um, has to be in a yellow jacket in order to arrive at an orgasm? Um, a lot of times that is kind of, you know, the case. Uh, for you know kinks like kinky people where they'll have like this one or few like kinks or fetishes that they're like Okay, I need to have this or else I won't orgasm and they can get like fixated on it um, And a lot of times they have to like branch out to be able to understand and like get more used to like other ways of orgasming um, So that could be something that a kinky person could also, you know, get involved in um, and probably go down that dark side and it can become some type of conflict between them and their partner that we should all try to be aware of whether you're with a kinky person or if you are a kinky person yourself. Number three on this list of the erotic blueprints is the energetic type. Now the energetic type is all about aura and sensitivity. They're all about the eye gazing, you know? So those people that really just love eye contact and that like intimacy and creating that, you know, between them, you know, like breathing on your skin. Um, they love teasing and anticipation and space. So they really like, you know, that like even like just like being right there close to their face or like, you know, having your um, like your hands just kind of like travel over their body, you know, not even like touching the body yet, but it's just like anything that just kind of like makes them like feel your energy a lot of times. Um, and I also believe that these are the people that are like most into like mental games, you know? So things such as like role playing, for example, um, where they are able to like sext a lot of times and they have these like very vivid imaginations and this world of creativity that they're able to, you know, build and write about and explore and all of that. Um, I think that these, like, you know, this just goes into the energetic types and then when they're able to have somebody else that they can really connect with on that kind of level, then it's just extremely euphoric for them. Um, this is the type that's also um, able to orgasm the easiest. Um, when it comes to like, you know, again, like having that right type of energy. In fact, Jaya says that these people can even lead themselves to orgasm a lot of times if they're really that tapped in. Um, so clearly there's a lot going on for this energetic type, um, but that also brings a lot of the downfall. So unfortunately, the downfall of the energetic type can often be pride. Um, a lot of times these people tend to have a sort of like hierarchy where they feel like, oh, because, you know, I'm so spiritual and so, you know, mystical with my sex aura and the way that I approach sex and the way that I view sex, like it's just this kind of, you know, hippie kind of thing or whatever, then they kind of like look at other people who may view sex in a different way as almost like beneath them or imbeciles of some sort. Um, and that is definitely not true. They're just different from how you are, but that doesn't make you more special in a way. Um, this, these can also be the types of people that, in my opinion, could slut shame a lot of other people, you know, especially a specific other um, erotic type that we will be talking about or be getting into. They sometimes also may have too many boundaries. Um, this is a lot of times called to, like, because of trauma. Um, and, you know, they can, this, this pretty much is a sign that this person might need healing. So a lot of times because they're so open and so sensitive to these types of energies and all of that, then if it's like happening from like a younger age, then all of a sudden these things can like affect them in a certain way that'll make them, you know, then have these traumas to where it's like, even if somebody may like breathe in the wrong way in their direction or, you know, may touch them in the wrong way or whatever, and like in the wrong place, whatever it might be, then it can trigger something. Um, and so that again, would need a lot of 
feeling. And that's sort of the dark side when it comes to that. But when they are not in that space, when they're able to accept people for how they are, um, and they are able to understand that they have their own views of sex, but then other people also have their own views of sex, then these people can actually be very great in bed. Um, so if you are an energetic type, or if you're with an energetic type, then these are some things that you should definitely be mindful of. The fourth erotic blueprint that we're going to be talking about today is the sexual. Now, the sexual type is described as having a very high libido. They can be very impulsive when it comes to sex, you know. They're very mission-focused and spontaneous. Um, they also do not really need much to get turned on. So these are actually the people who have the classic WAP, as Meg Thee Stallion and Cardi B put it. You know, they're their vaginas stay wet in a way, you know, and they are pretty much the opposite of sensual. So if the sensual needs the bed to be made a certain way and certain smells and, you know, just all of this like, you know, erotic or like mental foreplay that just goes on even like beforehand and all of this stuff just like get ready, like a crock pot of some sort of way. The sexual is the one that's literally like comes into your office and it's like, all right, how much time do we have? Brushes everything off the desk and it's like, okay, 10 minutes, we can do this. And they just, they're just all about it. They're not really caring about what the smell is. I knew a girl who was a sexual um, type um, who had it like um, the number one in her stack. I think it was either number one or number two for her percentages. Um, and she told me that she had sex next to a dumpster. <laughs> and it was just, clearly it was just spontaneous and everything. And she said it was fun, you know? Um, it's not that they necessarily like choose to do that, but it's like, hey, you know, like it's more about like just getting that orgasm. But that is also where their dark side can come in once again. Um, so these people can unfortunately be, unfortunately be very fleeting with their sexual desires. Um, and they can also see sex very one-dimensionally, um, which means that they can oftentimes just get very, like so mission focused and so fixated on their orgasm that they can often like skip foreplay or even trying to like please their own partner because they're just trying to like get it in and get it out kind of thing because it's like, oh, I'm so horny. I just need to get this out. Um, some people like being used in that way. They don't really mind, but a lot of times that is not really how people like to be treated. Um, especially during sex and so um, this is something that if you have sexual high in your um, erotic blueprint percentage you should you want to be careful of you want to um, be mindful of or if you have a partner who has this high on their erotic blueprint this is something that you might want to like communicate with them um, probably at a time when they are not aroused so they can actually think clearly and like hear you um, but like I said these people once they're when they're not in that kind of um thing they're actually really fun you know because these again are the very spontaneous people who are just down like they're dtf whenever you know and i guess who doesn't really like that and last but not least the fifth erotic blueprint that we're going to be talking about is the shapeshifter so this one i saved it for last because for those of you who understand type um it could be kind of come off as the INFJ of personality psychology. Um, you know, the the unicorn, the special unicorn that everybody wants to be this type or, you know, in some way, shape or form or identifies with it in some way, shape or form. Um, I personally would caution against that. Um, and, you know, just classically, I would like to think that all five of these um, have their strengths in a certain way um, and they also again have their weaknesses in a certain way and none of them are better than the other they're just different just like personality type um, so with all of that aside though I will say that the best way that I can explain the shapeshifter from my understanding and everything is they're kind of like the avatar where they pretty much are the master or um, in a way capable of becoming a master and fluent in all of the languages that we just spoke about. 
Um, and so they are aroused by beautiful environments. They are also into the taboo a lot of times. They can be very edgy. They also are into like kinky play and erotic imagery. Um, they see sex as like a spiritual and transcendent kind of thing. You know, they judge themselves for thinking that they're too much a lot of times, which is something that comes very heavily with their dark side that we're gonna be getting into. Um, but they love a variety of sexual things, you know, and creativity in that sense. Um, and so in a way, these are the people who, again, if all of the erotic blueprints are a language of some sort, then the shapeshifter is the one who is most capable of being able to learn to speak all of them fluently and naturally actually enjoys it, you know? So if there's somebody who, for example, is high and sensual, then they often do not really enjoy the sexual, you know? There's a lot of people who may really detest the kinky, you know? Um, but the shapeshifter, for example, enjoys all of the above, like fairly equally, um, and is able to do any of those for their partner willingly. Um, but this, again, brings the dark side. And in fact, I think that being blessed with all of these gifts also blesses them <laughs> with a lot of curses um, as well. And so, again, like I said, the shapeshifter can actually be afraid to ask what they want. They're very big on people pleasing and this causes them to fail sometimes to even please themselves. Um, and they also are easily bored and they're most likely to explore and to get stuck in shadow aspects of all of the types. Um, so every shadow type, every shadow part of the types that we mentioned previously, the shapeshifter is prone to be able to get stuck in all of them, either all at once or different times, um, which is, obviously like not good. Um, but the biggest thing for the shapeshifter is that they can be so much of a people pleaser. They can be so focused on literally sh shapeshifting or like, you know, adjusting their style to whatever the other person might want that sometimes they can get stuck in that, you know? And then they, um, because they're so quick to match what the other person wants and to serve that other person, then a lot of times they don't really voice like, oh, you know, well, honestly, again, if these are all languages, I kind of always speak Spanish. Um, I really would love to try to speak Japanese today. You know, I really would like to try more of like, we always do like the, the sexual, you know, we always just kind of like, you know, do whatever. But today I'd really want to like try the sensual. I and mean, like, you know, today I'm actually feeling a little bit kinky. Like I want to like try these kind of things. Like they, they just like to explore and dabble with all of these things and this, can also oftentimes, according to Jaya in several of the videos that I watched about her, um, pretty much she said that these are the types who are most liable to cheat um, on their partner because they are so curious about exploring more of these dynamics and because um, majority of people are usually like um, proficient in one or two of these erotic blueprints, then the shapeshifter who's trying to like, you know, become proficient in all of them, um, can sometimes like be like, okay, well now I'm kind of like bored with these one or two that we just keep on visiting. I want to like uh, try out my tongue on all of these other ones, no pun intended. Um, and so they can, you know, that curiosity and that exploration can kind of like draw them away from their partner and want to explore more variety, um, which again is of course frowned upon in our society. Um, so if you are a shapeshifter, I want to admonish you to try to become aware of that within yourself and to try to speak up, try to like know what your needs are and when you actually are feeling a certain type of way, there's no problem with pleasing your partner. Um, however, there is a problem if you are overly pleasing them and you're not granting them the opportunity or the information and knowledge to be able to please you back. Now it's different if they refuse to please you back, um, you might want to find somebody else then as a partner, um, but you at least should give them that type of opportunity um, and try to also teach them what you know, you know, try to like find a compromise and communicate about these things. That way they can help you um, to be able to have that variety and exploration 
um, within y'all's dynamic without you having to try to like go and explore in other places unless if y'all are in like some type of like polyamorous relationship of some sort and there's like an agreement um, then okay y'all do you um, but yeah all of that being said these are the five erotic blueprints. If you want to learn more about these, uh, you can feel free to comment below and I will answer to the best of my ability. But I will also recommend that you guys go and follow Jaya's um, YouTube channel. She has a lot of these videos on there. I also bought some of her content um, after I discovered which um, blueprint that I was um, or which of the erotic blueprints that I was. It was... Honestly, it was just mind-blowing um, because when I'd come across this, I honestly was not expecting it to be this beneficial. Like, I thought, again, like, I, I thought that it was going to be like, you know, hey, like, just something like cheap, I guess. You know, I was like, oh, this is fun kind of thing, you know. But it actually ended up really bringing a lot of validation for me and clarity and I... I kind of got like low-key emotional because it, it goes into like things about like trauma sometimes you know that you may have had you know and um just a lot of like why you are the way that you are and like a lot of the struggles that you may have um because of being this type and then some ways that you can be able to overcome it and be able to embrace this more um and yeah i just i personally found it like very helpful um so that's me. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Um, hopefully it helps spice up your Valentine's Day a little bit or even just your everyday life. Um, and again, be sure to go and take the quiz if you haven't already. Although I hope that you took this before you, you took the quiz before continuing to listen. It's not that long of a quiz. Um, but yeah, check out Jaya's page as well. Check out her blogs. Check out uh, the YouTube videos where she explains a lot of this. I binged like almost all of her videos because she again is a sexologist who doesn't want to learn more about this you know who who wouldn't want to learn more about this um and she has a lot of like cool things she is kind of funny her and her um partner ian um they like to use the word juicy a lot so <laughs> be ready for that um but all in all, I think that they're a pretty dope couple and they can actually, they give a lot of insight and she knows her, her stuff for sure. Um, and they're quite entertaining at that. So yeah, that's what I got for y'all today. Hope that y'all enjoyed and found it helpful. Done.